Hi everyone, this is Miss Moore and today we are performing order of operations with expressions involving fractions. I know that not everyone has a copy of the lesson template in front of them and that's okay because you can make your own notes today using lined paper or graph paper if you need to. Let's warm up with the following question. This is actually an excerpt from an article in the New York Times regarding a math equation that kind of went viral. The article is titled, The Math Equation That Tried to Stump the Internet. Let's read it together and then try this problem. Mathematical Twitter is normally a quiet, well-ordered place, a refuge from the aggravations of the internet. But on July 28th, someone who must have been a troll off-duty decided to upset the stillness and did so with a surefire provocation. It has to do with something that high school teachers call the order of operations. The latest blow up concerned this seemingly simple equation, eight divided by two times two plus two. Many respondents were certain that the answer was 16. Others heard Yanni, not Laurel, and insisted the right answer was one. That's when the trash talking began. Some of y'all failed math and it shows, said one. Another posted a photo showing that even two different electronic calculators disagreed. The normally reassuring world of math where right and wrong exist and logic must prevail started to seem troublingly, perhaps tantalizingly fluid. The question above has a clear and definite answer, provided we all agree to play by the same rules governing the order of operations. When, as in this case, we are faced with several mathematical operations to perform, to evaluate expressions in parentheses, carry out multiplications or divisions, or do additions or subtractions, the order in which we do them can make a huge difference. Please pause the video here while you try to simplify the expression above, clearly showing how you arrived at your answer. Well, my friends, if you got 16, you are correct. We have to evaluate the parentheses first, 2 plus 2. But then afterwards, we feel obligated to multiply our answer by 2, but we must not do it. Because division and multiplication are operations of equal precedence. And when they both occur, we have to perform them in order left to right. Therefore, we must do 8 divided by 2 first and then multiply that answer by 4. Let's start today's lesson by recapping the basics of order of operations. There is a fondly known acronym BEDMAS or PEDMAS, which tells us in what order we need to evaluate an expression by performing operations. B stands for brackets, also called parentheses, Technically, brackets are square brackets and parentheses are curved brackets, but we tend to use these interchangeably. E is for exponents. D is for division and M is for multiplication. A is for addition and S is for subtraction. And I've written them in the form D slash M and A slash S so that we never forget that these two operations, division and multiplication and addition and subtraction, are operations of equal priority and must be completed left to right when they both appear. You don't do addition before subtraction just because A comes before S. You do them left to right. Let's try some of these examples below. Simplify each of the following expressions clearly showing which section you're working on by circling or highlighting it. We'll do the first one together and then we'll pause the video for you to try the others on your own. Let's take a look at the first expression here. We've got two sets of parentheses going on. It doesn't matter which one you start with, so I'm just going to pick the first one. 2 over 9 plus 1 over 9 simplifies to 2 plus 1 over 9, or 3 over 9. Which we can further simplify as 1 over 3. Now we're ready to do the second set of parentheses, one third minus one quarter. 
We don't conveniently have a common denominator like we did for the first set of parentheses, so we'll have to create one. Let's pick 12. Now we'll have 1 third times 4 over 12 minus 3 over 12. When we evaluate this, we'll have 4 minus 3 all over 12, which is 1 over 12. I'm going to cheat a little bit and shrink my answer so it can fit. One third times one over 12 is one over 36. Please pause the video here while you try the other examples. Okay, let's compare our answers. For the second example, I followed bed mass within the parentheses doing the multiplication before the addition. My final answer was 12 over 5. For the third one, I followed bed mass within the parentheses again to begin with, but I want to warn you of this trap waiting for you right here. It's really tempting for you to do 2 ninths minus 7 ninths, but you mustn't do that because addition and subtraction are operations of equal priority, so they must be done in left, left to right when they both appear. So we have to do 3 quarters plus 2 ninths first. Then we take 35 over 36 minus 7 ninths. My final answer for the last example was 7 sixths. Here's our next example, and you'll notice that this one contains exponents. Pause the video here if you feel like you know how to try, or if you're not quite sure how to deal with the exponent, let me give you a hint before you start. What does an exponent mean? If we had any number a squared, this would mean a times a. So what does it mean when we have a fraction squared? If we had a over b squared, this would be a over b times a over b, or a squared over b squared. When you apply the law of multiplying fractions, numerator times numerator, and denominator times denominator. Okay, that's my hint. Let's give this question a try now. So starting with 2 thirds squared, we're able to simplify that into 4 ninths, and then proceed with our regular order of operations to arrive at negative 71 over 90. Well, that's it for today's lesson. Time to do your assignment. Please don't forget to check your answers before turning in your work. Bye for now.